Hi, thanks for coming, uh, for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two. As you can see, Art and I are with Mr. Forgotten Hollywood, Manny Pacheco. Good to see you, Manny. Good to see you too, John. Art, how you doing? Great. You know, so we we can say Manny Pacheco of Forgotten Hollywood, but Manny Pacheco himself is never forgotten. He's always top of mind when anything <laughs> Hollywood comes up. And as a matter of fact, um, uh, I, I've been uh, we we communicate in between episodes and things like that. And I know that uh, we've talked about the fact that you have this like love affair with going to Lorone Hardy conventions. Uh, and I know that um, it may it may have been uh, uh, fairly recently that you were excited about going out of town to one of them. Uh, so what's new in the world of Laurel Hardy and things related to them? Well, yes, you're right about that. I love going to events that are sponsored by the Laurel and Hardy Appreciation Society. It's a, an international society of fans of Laurel and Hardy. I would say arguably that Laurel and Hardy may have the most loyal fans in the world of cinema. And, and to prove it, they have these uh, chapters all over the world, uh, and, but they call their ch individual chapters tents. So if you go to one tent or you go to another, you're going to a chapter, and they name the tents after Laurel and Hardy's films. So I, I, was, <laughs> in, yeah, I was in San Diego and I went to the Sap Sat Sea tent. So that made me a sap. And, <laughs> and I went to the one in North Hollywood, California, and I, and I was in, at the way out west tent, but they yeah. have the you know the babes in Toyland tent, and they they have the two tars tent. They all named after uh, Laurel and Hardy films, and then of course their international convention is based on the conventions that Laurel and Hardy went to, which was the Sons of the Desert. So yeah. the international convention I did go last year. I've gone a couple of times, but last year it was held in New Mexico, and in honor of that, I have to wear my fez. <laughs> My Sons of the Desert Fizz. Where's my tassel? There it is. Okay, That's there we go. Great. <laughs> lean for, lean it, forward, it lean forward so we can see the whole hat. Sons of the Desert. Uh, yeah. There it the is. That's desert. great. <laughs> so I've got my, my Fez. I don't know if to wear it sideways or I don't know how. I, but yeah, I got my Fez. And, and, and I, you know, they, they very much have uh, partnered with me with lots of forgotten Hollywood um, activities. And now... Here is the good news. I have been uh, appearing a, a couple of these tents to speak the praises of Robert Youngson, who made a number of films, as we've discussed in the past, in the 1950s, sure. uh, that celebrated um, silent movies. And silent movies were quickly becoming forgotten in the 50s. And I don't mean just by memory. The nitrate was starting to disintegrate. So while other movie moguls were out and about making bigger and in color and, you know, Cinerama, Vista Vision, all in an effort to kind of circumvent television, Robert Youngson was a pioneer of looking backwards, saving silent comedies, kind of the Martin Scorsese of his time. And his films, The Golden Age of Comedy and um, uh, When Comedy Was King, two of seven of them, were so good that we are partnering with the uh, Laurel and Hardy Appreciation Society, Forgotten Hollywood is, and we're trying to get those two films into the Library of Congress uh, National Film Registry as they choose their films for 2023. Oh, wow. that'd be great, wouldn't it? And, you know, as we had mentioned before in a previous conversation, you can vote for free. Yeah. We ask you to vote for When Comedy Was King, made in 1960, uh, and The Golden Age of Comedy in 1957, and just get those in there, and hopefully they'll take notice. I was at the recent Turner Classic Movies Film Festival, talked to Jacqueline Stewart about it, and I even spoke to one of the gentlemen who is the uh, vice president of content creation at Turner, and I suggested that maybe we should work on, because film preservation happens to be a real pet project mm -hmm. of Turner, why don't we do a night of Robert Youngson's films and talk about his preservation of, of, of silent films? And one other thing that I tried to, you know, enthrall them with, that before he was making these films, Robert Youngson was making two reelers and winning Oscars for Warner Brothers, the parent company of, of Turner. No hmm. kidding. So, that, that's right. By, by the way, Matt, Manny, when does the uh, voting start, or is it on now? 
it's going on right now. It goes on until about September so, or so let October. So let me ask you this. I'm assuming I would normally put a lower third on here or something, but is it if it's a long involved address, I can put a clickable link in the description below. So uh, yeah, make sure that, yeah, that that's taken care of in this conversation. I'll yeah, make sure yeah. that, that that happens. But, you know, the, the idea of partnering with Laurel and Hardy makes sense. Youngson had a real love affair with, with the Babe and, and, and Stan. And one of the films, The uh, Battle of the Century, which appears in the Golden Age of Comedy, was deemed lost. It, it, it just self-destructed. But before it did, Youngson took a piece of it and put it in his film. So even though it was gone, it was still relevant because it kept appearing in this film. And remember that a whole generation of baby boomers were introduced to silent films by Youngson's golden age of comedy and when comedy was king. And so they remembered this battle of the century, not knowing that it was completely lost forever, except it wasn't. In 2014 or so, it might have been a little earlier, but by 2014, it was, it was, it was found in, in a private collection of, of somebody who just saved a lot of silent films, and they were able to re-put uh, the, the film back together, complete with Youngson's part of the film. Oh, so the first reel of the film was found, and Youngson's stuff was the second reel, and they were able to put it back together and reconstruct the film, and now the film exists. It's not lost anymore, and, wow. the, and the year that it was put back together, the Library of Congress instantly added it into their national film registry. Oh, so if they're going to honor the lost film, shouldn't they honor the man who kept the film relevant for like 50 years, 70 years? You bet. You know, that's that's the way Make, I look. Makes sense. It makes sense. Well, yeah. uh, look, we can all do our part and go vote. Yep. I think you can. National Film Registry of the Library of Congress, it's free to vote. Mm. Free, absolutely free to vote. And uh, yeah, it's 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 it's. I think that he's a great example of forgotten Hollywood. Robert Youngson is a pioneer that should never be forgotten. Why not celebrate the really uh, wonderful humanities thing that he did in 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 saving silent comedy, saving Max Sennett's um, Charlie Chaplin pieces, saving cops from Buster Keaton, saving all of this work from Harry Langdon and Charlie mm. Chase and Ben Turpin. I mean, he did he did mm. so much, and I think that honoring him by simply voting for his work would be uh, would be a wonderful gesture. Yeah, and, and when we vote, are, the, are we voting for the names, the titles? Yes. And, and so tell, me, I, tell me the titles again. The Golden Age of Comedy. Right. And When Comedy Was King. And those are the Youngston films. That's right, but you can vote to up. You can vote for up to fifty films. I just, I'm just asking you to make sure that those two are at the top of the list. <laughs> okay, we'll we'll make sure that it's in a, uh, a down below in the description. It'll be a clickable uh, link so people can get there. Uh, also, uh, Manny, uh, we John and I have gone with you to enough of the Hollywood Heritage and TCMs and other conventions, and we know your love of the business, but it, it goes beyond that. You really care about it enough to take care of things that other people might consider to be obscure, but you know are important and other people right. know are important. But it needs somebody to be a shepherd to get these things through. Otherwise, they don't happen. Yep. Thank you. Well, it sure doesn't hurt to have the international, you know, um, Laurel and Hardy uh, Appreciation Society to partner with. Yeah. They, uh, they are really a wonderful bunch of, of folks. I've got to be uh, friends with a number of them. Uh, when I went to the Saps at Sea Tent in San Diego, I've been deemed an official Sap for life. Yeah. So, <laughs> and when you vote, remember though, um, the bad news is that a Fez is not included. So, oh, okay. unfortunately, so as they say in Chicago, vote early and vote often. That's right. That's task. That I, we're going to have to end this soon because this tassel is just causing a lot of itch right yeah. now. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you, Manny. Oh. <laughs> See you soon. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.